Did you know that angels don't take vacations? That's just one truism that Archangel Metatron shares in today's thought-provoking message. Begins with the creation of the multiverse and concludes with guidance on your ascension path. I hope you'll stay to the very end to hear how Metatron connects the dots for this very powerful message about your soul journey. Hi, this is Deborah Lupien, voice of the Akashic Records, bringing you a message from Archangel Metatron. On this night, many thoughts weigh heavily upon my consciousness, some beyond your ability to comprehend. Let's see he says, as he flips through an index file. Ah, this one seems to fit the bill, he says. Great, lay it on me. The aligning of the planets is complex and mysterious, at least from your side of the equation. From our perspective, they're perfectly aligned like cogs in the great wheel of the universe. They all impact one upon another. That is, until something shifts in the cosmos, such as a planet that dies and falls out of orbit, or one that is destroyed by outside forces. When that happens, the angel triage team rushes in to monitor the situation, making adjustments as directed by creator to reset the pattern into a new configuration. In fact, there's a special angel delegation assigned to this task. I'm shown a brief visual of what looks like a sophisticated control room filled with angelic beings, all absorbed in their assigned activities. I asked, are angels assigned to this delegation permanently? Metatron responds, yes, it is a specialization and they feel honored to have this responsibility. It's not like your 3D situation where you change jobs or you take a vacation. I ask, does that mean angels never get or need a vacation? Metatron responds, no, angels do not require, nor do they seek out vacation. They are, however, sometimes called upon for special assignment. Okay, great. What else can you tell me about the alignment of the planets? At this point, I'm given a visual of the planets dancing and twirling around to the mushroom dance from Fantasia. Metatron continues, yes, the planets have what you would think of as a soul, with consciousness and purpose, but you already know that having spoken with Gaia. Yes, that's true, I respond. I just hadn't thought about it in that context. What else can you teach us about planets? At this point, I'm giving another visual of the souls of the planets before they became planets. They have forms somewhat like human, but much larger and with more powerful energy. In fact, they look like depictions I've seen of the Titans from mythology. Metatron explains, this is from the time before creator designed the universe. When that plan was being formulated, these Titans, as you described them, were called upon to be the animated force of what were then just big rocks. Creator took great delight in matching up each Titan with their rock. Much partying and celebration ensued as all the beings then in existence gave the Titans a big send-off on their journey to becoming full-fledged planets. Once embodied in their rock, a designated angel team assisted in the becoming process as each rock took their assigned place in the cosmos and evolved into a planet, thus forming the multiverse. Wow, how cool is that? Metatron continues, as their evolution progressed, some were shifted to new locations while others were merely adjusted into the most perfect place to fulfill their purpose. And so it has been since the time before humanity was created. That's pretty cool, Metatron. What else would you like to share? There will be those who are skeptical of this story. What would you say to them? Metatron responds, of course, it is up to each to decide what is true for them. That is your right as a sovereign being. In fact, we encourage you to be skeptical, to compare and contrast as you evaluate information and decide upon its truthiness. Remember, you are all creating and living in your own reality. What you see and experience will be different than the next person. There are often enough similarities that you are not conscious of the difference, these are the folks you experience as being in agreement with. 
Then there are others whose reality is vastly different from yours. In those instances, bridging the gap to communicate may be a challenge. The important thing to understand is that this doesn't make anyone wrong. Their experience is perfect for them. We encourage you to approach it like a game rather than a conflict. The objective is to accept one another regardless of how wide the chasm. It is not necessary to persuade them that your reality is the right one. Yes, it is right for you, but perhaps not for them. Winning this game requires accepting and allowing that they are right and you are also right. Taking it a step further, as you expand your consciousness, you'll understand it was never about anyone being right. Right is irrelevant, unimportant, and not a part of the game. Let go of right, which is an egoic function, and flow into acceptance that every soul is sovereign and perfect, including you. I respond, okay, so please connect the dots between being right and the alignment of planets story. Why these two lessons now? Metatron responds, your journey is about consciousness expansion. That is true for every single soul, regardless of their personal reality. We share the planet alignment story for whomever desires a greater understanding of the multiverse. Each person who hears the story will interpret it in their own unique way. That interpretation will become their truth, and that is perfect. Somewhat like a divine game of telephone. When I question whether they really mean telephone, Metatron affirms with humor and a twinkle of mischief in his eyes. As understanding sinks in, I'm reminded of how they sprinkle inspired ideas across the planet with the expectation that only some will take action, and those actions may be vastly different exactly because of individual perception of truth and free choice. From their vantage point, they can see the big picture with set points in time fleshed out, while the details from point to point are lightly sketched in to allow us to fill in the blanks through our unique journey. They take great delight in watching our progress. Holy cow. I was just hit with this image of us being their entertainment. Like we're all actors in a grand play with a script that encourages us to improvise our lines. Life viewed through that lens is vastly different than you or I might've imagined. What if we accepted that reality and stopped trying to be right? Instead, focusing on our own journey as we roll the dice and move forward on a life-size Candyland board, playing hopscotch and tumbling forward with delightful gusto as we gleefully anticipate the next roll of the dice adventure. Instead of competing with one another, we focus on feeling and expressing joy each and every day, not caring a whit whether those people playing on their own board are abiding by the same rules because they're playing an entirely different game. We are each author of our story, the artist drawing our game board, the creator of our reality and playing that game is our highest purpose. Imagine everyone engaged this way. When we cross paths, we excitedly share about our adventures and we're genuinely happy for one another. As we hear their stories, we're free to shift our perspective should something they share inspire. Perhaps we're intrigued and decide to give their ideas a go to see if they work for us. There's a giant pool of inspired ideas from which we may partake to contrast and compare. But through it all, we accept and allow, not judging nor making anyone feel wrong, because we now have the higher perspective that there is no such thing as wrong amongst creators. You can be a Picasso, a Monet, a Rembrandt, a Pollock, etc. Different strokes for different folks, and so it goes. The liberation of not judging is delicious. It frees up more time to be in full out joy, to feel love and acceptance for one another. We highly suggest you consider this way of being, for it is in perfect alignment with your soul journey. Or you can take the thorny path. We'll accompany you on whatever path you choose. Okay, Metatron, 
we've traveled pretty far from where we began with the creation of the planets. Are there any more dots you want to connect? Metatron stands there juggling a bunch of yellow balls, like tennis balls, with calm and ease. Something that might be impossible for you or I, he does smoothly and effortlessly. He grins and says, let us worry about keeping all the balls in the air. You focus on your journey and allow others to do the same. When you stop worrying about what others are doing or not doing, you'll have more peace and more opportunity to expand your consciousness. That's how you connect more dots. Work with what you've got right now and know that more dots or balls will show up in divine timing. Your job, if you want to call it that, is to work on yourself so that you'll be ready for the next dot slash ball. Our advice is don't overcomplicate. Always make the choice that feels the best and take the opportunity to engage in a game of hopscotch when the opportunity presents itself. Stay in the flow and be ready to receive the abundance that is lined up waiting for you to reach out and accept it. Remember when you went to the local carnival and you played catch the plastic duck? All you had to do was pay the fee, then stand and wait for the duck to float down to you in order to claim your prize. That's how simple life can be if you allow it to be so. Take inspired action, line yourself up, then be ready to receive with joy when it arrives. Let us take care of the rest. You see? Flow and ease. Let that be your mantra. When you find yourself stressing and straining, that's a clue you've shifted out of alignment. Pause, reflect, figure out where the imbalance is, then take swift action to get back on track. Keep doing that. Keep doing that. Just keep doing that as often as necessary. Soon, flow and ease will be as natural as breathing, and it will require far less effort to travel your soul's path, which is the ascension path. Ah, ascension. We've talked about that before. If you haven't heard about the ascension path, then you might want to listen to some of these videos because it's an important part of the journey if you're planning to keep up with Gaia's ascension and not get left behind. Wow, that's really cool how you connected another dot, Metatron. Thank you for the clarity and inspiration. That's what I'm here for, he says. I appreciate the opportunity to be of service. Call on me anytime. More is better. Sayonara. Adieu. Adios. Au revoir. So long. Well, how fun was that? You'll find many more messages from Archangel Metatron on this channel because Metatron is the overseer of the Akashic Records and manages all the angels and guides of the Akasha. It's a big job, but he dearly loves each and every one of us, almost as much as Divine Creator. He and his team are on call 24-7 to assist you in any way that you will allow. So don't hesitate to call out when you need help. They've got your back, always. With love and blessings, this is Deborah Lupien, Voice of the Akashic Records, signing off.